In this example, we will implement Perlex scrolling cards effect. Look at these cards while I'm scrolling. So I'm running three different animations in this scroll animation. First, we are moving the image inside the cards to give that Perlex effect. For example, see how the moon is moving up when I'm scrolling up. And it moves down when I scroll down. Another animation we are running is fading the cards out and shrinking them when they are leaving the viewport. So look at these cards. And the third animation is fading the cards in and growing them in size when they enter the viewport. So look at these cards. So you can see how they are growing and fading in. Now let's go to the code editor to learn how to implement this. I switch to the code editor and I remove the animations from this example. So if I scroll, nothing happens here. Let's start with the parallax animation for the cards. But before that, let's see how the HTML is structured for each card element. For each card, we have three elements. We have a div with a class name card for the card itself. Then inside it, we have a card image wrapper, which wraps the image inside it, which we are using an image tag for. Now let's go to the styles. So for each card, we are giving a width of 300 pixels, a height of 300 pixels, and overflow clip, which is the same as hidden. And for the border radius, we are using 20 pixels. And for the image wrapper, we are setting height to 600 pixels, and the card image has width of 100%, height of 100%, and object fit to cover. The key thing we need to understand for this animation is how we are setting the height for the image wrapper. So notice how the height is bigger than the height of the card. And that's important. Because when the wrapper is bigger than the card, then we can move the wrapper inside the card without showing any white space. So let me demonstrate that with this. If I use transform and translate Y, now let's just use 100 pixels here. So look what happens. When I used 100 pixels, we pushed the wrapper by 100 pixels from the top. So now we can see a white space. And the reason for that is when it's zero pixels, then the top of the wrapper is the same as the top of the card. But if we move the wrapper up using negative values, then we can move it without seeing a white space. Let's try this. If we say negative 100 pixels, so you can see how it moved up without showing a white space. But there's a limit for that. So if we say, for example, 300 pixels, we still moved it up without showing a white space. But what about 400 pixels? Now you can see there is a white space because we exceeded the limit we can move the wrapper inside the card without showing the white space. And the maximum value is 300 pixels. And that's because the wrapper height is 600 pixels minus the height of the card, which is 300 pixels, which equals 300 pixels. So now we know that the limit is negative 300 pixels. So the animation for image wrapper will be transform translate y from negative 300 pixels to zero. So let's define that. So let's say animation, move image, linear, forwards. Let's define it here. Move image from transform, translate y, negative 300 pixels, to transform, translate y, zero. But now we need to think about animation timeline. And from this example, it's clear that we need to use a view progress timeline because we want to track the position of the card when we are scrolling. So to progress the animation of the image wrapper, we need to observe the position of the card when we scroll. But can you see that we are talking about two different elements? We need to track the position of the card, but we want to animate the image wrapper, which means we want to make the card as the subject and then use it for animating the image wrapper. So first, let's define the card as the subject. So let's go here and say view timeline name and let's call it card. And let's go here and in the wrapper, we're going to use it. Let's say animation timeline and we're going to use that subject. And let's save. Let's try that. So the parallax effect works as expected. And notice how we didn't need to use animation range. And that's because we wanted to run the animation across the whole scroll port. So we could use cover for that 
or we can use the default value which is normal and in this case normal will be the same as cover now let's implement the fed in for the cards so when the card enters the viewport we want to run an animation where the card fades in and it grows in size so let's go to card here and let's say animation let's say fed in linear forwards and let's define the animation here fade in it will be from opacity 0 and to opacity 1 that's for fading it in now let's scale it up we're going to use transform scale let's say transform scale it will be 80% and when it's completely in it will be 100% so let's say transform scale 1 now let's use the animation now for the animation timeline, we're going to use the view progress timeline. So let's say animation timeline, and it's going to be view. And notice how I'm using here anonymous view timeline, because the element we are animating, which is the card, is the same as the subject we are tracking the position of. But notice how we are also defining it as the subject. So we can either use the anonymous here, and it will work perfectly. But since we already gave it a name, we can use the name here. So it's exactly the same as using anonymous view timeline, but this way the code seems more consistent. Now what about the animation range? Since we want to animate the card when they are entering the scroll board, then entry is the best one. So let's say animation range, entry. Now let's try that. So let's scroll. So look how these cards are animating correctly. So that works. But what about fading out? So we are also going to animate the card and using it as the subject. But we already have an animation defined here. Can we use multiple animations here? And yes, you can by separating them with a comma. So the first animation we defined is fade in. Let's define another one. Let's say fade out. And also linear forwards. But what about animation range? So for animation range, entry is for the first animation here. And we can also define for the second one by using a comma. So let's say comma, and this one will be exit, because we want to fade the cards out when they are leaving the viewport. And lastly, let's define the animation. So we're going to copy this, and paste it here, and it will be called fade out. Now this will be the opposite, so it will start with opacity 1, and transform 1, and when it ends, it will be 0, and the scale 0.8. Now let's save and try. So fading in still works, and fading out works. So we learned here that we can define multiple animations for the same element, and we can separate them with a comma. And there's an alternative way to do that, which sometimes looks cleaner to me. And we can define a single animation for that, and then define the animation ranges separately. So let's do that. So instead of calling it fed in, we're going to say fed card, and we're going to remove the other one. So now we have a single animation. And we don't need to specify the animation ranges here. Instead, we want to define them in the keyframes of the animation. So let's scroll here. Let's remove fed out. And let's rename fed in to be fed card. So this was fed in. It was for the entry animation range. What we can do, we can just say entry 0% and for the two, we can say entry 100%. And then we can define the other range. So let's go down here and say exit 0% and it will be the same as this one. And then let's say exit 100% and it will be the same as this one. So let's save and try. So fade in works, and fade out works. So it's just another way to define multiple animations. You can either define a single animation and define the animation ranges within the keyframe, or you can define each animation separately and each one will have its own keyframes. Just choose whatever feels better to you. And we are done with this example and it works correctly.